In some places, the wind blows strongly. Kites dominate a sunny sky. Smiles light up the world. Life flows more freely in the Dominican Republic. Or does it? The wind. You can't see it. You can feel it. Zephyr means a gentle breeze. It's unbound, unrestricted, free. You can be a free spirit on a the farm. There are no rules, there are no regulations. You did what you want. So often we get caught up in life's routine, stuck dreaming of freedom. It's different to every single person. We're breaking free and going on a road trip. We've been through Australia and we're going overland to London. But before that, we are heading to the world's most iconic island, Jamaica. Cuba, Dominican Republic, Sri Lanka, and Madagascar. We're going to find out what they have to offer and what freedom means to them. I feel travelling, it's, it's, it's always like I'm being a little bit uncomfortable, getting outside of, uh, outside of your, your comfort zone. Probably not many people in this part of the world actually even know where Dominican Republic is, but... I want to feel the atmosphere, the rhythm, the aroma, the beat, the thrill, the fun. About freedom. Relaxing, isn't it? The delights of the beach. It's not surprising the Dominican Republic is one of the most popular tourist sites in the Caribbean. To many, that's all this country is. A sandy, international break from working life. Nothing wrong with that, but we were here to discover the real Dominican Republic. We landed in Punta Cana, a tourist hotspot. There, we ventured down to the beach and met a man who we hoped could direct us to a more suitable destination. My friend, yeah. I come here, I come to this part of the world mm -hmm. to do some cut surfing. You went up to the same Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now you mentioned a place up Macau. Macau. It's yeah. good. Yeah. They have a school, they do Thai surf. Okay. Because a lot of people like to go there and want to practice. That's that like world famous, world big people. More hobby, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. like it. Thank you so much, sir, for your nice generous advice. You, and uh, nice. I can't make, nice. promise to yes. make you film star, but. <laughs> Next up is Sabana del Mar, which provides us with our first experience of the colour of the country. Las Terranos was also beautiful, with its busy bars and restaurants. Colourful Samana was a town with a surprise. It was home to English-speaking Samana Americans, thanks to an immigration agreement in 1824 with the US. From Samana, we headed to Las Galeras, an unspoiled paradise and fishing village. We stayed the night and, yes, we tried the fish. Eager and close to our destination, we were up early in the morning, driving through the town of Nagua and past our final beach before Cabarete, Playa Grande. It lived up to its name. It was a big beach and quite possibly one of the greatest we'd seen. After too much driving, we were very happy to arrive. The kites in the air told the story. We'd made it. Cabaret. Zephyrus, the Greek god of wind, was no longer a breeze. Here, he roared in our ears. However, while it was at the apex of kite surfing locations, the place was somewhat diminished by tourism and the less obvious seedier industries that often latch onto it. But not to be too critical, Cabarete is a fantastic town. Being a Canadian expat and eight-year resident, Samantha Chilvers obviously thought so too. Sam is a professional kite surfer, early pioneer for women in kite surfing, artist and social media influencer. We talked to her about the Dominican Republic. Hi, Sam. I'm with Sam Chivers. So, what is it about 
kite surfing, kite boarding that you love? Or what's, what's, what's it do for you? Well, there's two things in particular. One, very similar to what you talk about. The, actually, I should say three, but um, the freedom. It's something that has encouraged me to travel all over the world. It's gone taking me to dozens of different countries, dozens of different cultures, and that kind of aspect of it, it's um, a really interesting, unique community around the world. The second is the endless progression. Um, you know, you can ride freestyle once you get bored of it, you got strapless, foil, racing, there's this constant sense of, you know, there's always something different you can do and learn with it. And for me, that sense of trying and achieving is a real big personal thing. Well, I mean, I think you're doing what you want to do. You're doing kiteboarding, which gives you this great sense of freedom. And you've, you're doing your painting, which is obviously, you know, you know, Way you express yourself and what you love to do, and yeah, you seem to have the, uh, have this free thing fairly well worked out. I've actually um, told a few people that I'm probably wealthier in freedom and time than most people are in money, but in a positive way. You know, they're only valuable if you have a bit of money. Yeah. <laughs> but um, there's quite a few times that I've realized that's one of my biggest assets in life, and yeah. it's worth a lot more than you know, selling myself out or something. Not many people have the freedom to just decide, I'm not happy here, I'm going to leave tomorrow. And that's something that kiting and painting has really allowed me to have in my life. Mm. So just very briefly on this whole um, thing about freedom and free spirit and doing what you want to and stuff, what, what, are you, uh, what, what are you about in your paintings, just briefly? Well, it's funny that you asked that um, because in some ways, they're almost a little bit about that. As you can see, I have two mix of styles. Obviously, my wave paintings are a lot inspired by the ocean, the connection we have with the ocean, the feelings we get from that. But my other, much more collage, detailed pieces like this, for me, they're usually particularly about sort of manifestation and connections to the universe and creating visual images to tell a story, often in a sense of inspiration. I go to Cuba and it's about cigars, it's about rum, it's about classic cars, it's about Fidel Castro. Um, I go to Jamaica, it's about reggae, it's Bob Marley, it's ganja. Now, I'm trying to come up with what what Dominican Republic is. I think I've got an answer, but I'll ask you. You know, this is sound a little bit cheesy, but the, literally the tourist slogan for Dominican Republic is, we have it all. We can't, like, we have everything, right? And that's actually when I think about it, what makes it so beautiful to be a country that has a little bit of everything. Often you go to Turks and Caicos and you only get the beaches and stuff. Where when you go to Santo Domingo, you're going to see that you're going to get a world-class capital city. It's got a lot of culture, got a lot of shopping, got a little bit of everything. Hell, they even have a metro. Yeah, you know? We have this peninsula, we have this kite surfing, we have incredible dancing, incredible music. Dancing, dancing is the other Well, this is where I yeah, say, yeah, like, yeah. I can't pick one thing and say, like, you know, we have incredible rum, we have incredible coffee. We make a huge amount of cocoa and produce it and sell it all over the world. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm off on my way to uh, Bowen Hombre. Yeah. yeah. That's uh, it. Yeah. Today was just another place that's going to yeah. be completely different from the last spot. So right. that part makes it. This is going to be real isolated, deserted. As I said, there's no running water there <laughs> and there's no electricity. Yeah. So bring a battery pack. <laughs> you might find yourself sitting in the car in the AC charging your phone. <laughs> But other than that, it's actually a really, really beautiful spot. Thank you so much for your time, Sam, and uh, <laughs> good luck with the painting, the god surfing, and everything else in life. We found an austere, dry, and remote part of the Dominican Republic. And wind five knots stronger than Cabarete. Samantha was right. Buen Hombre was a really beautiful spot. As we arrived at the hidden rustic kite surfing camp, we wondered, had we chased and finally found freedom? Maybe we've got life all wrong. Here, it was simple.
Though the light fades, find food and friendship. Wake to the kiss of the morning sun and immerse yourself in the ocean. Take a quick trip out to islands, little more than sandbars. Have a swim with friendly fish and enjoy the warmth of the sand and the people. then downwind kite back to the mainland to spend some time with the ones living in the moment. Hit the beach on a Sunday. To gain some perspective on living, Ree, the owner of Kite Buen Hombre, took us to meet a local tobacco farm, Seguia. Along the way, we fueled up on more Presidente, literally. He had freedom, a simple life. He was unburdened by the avalanche of knowledge and influences that bury most of us each day. We mused that maybe all this simplicity truly was the key to bliss. We asked Seguio his opinion on life. So here, so nice to meet you. I was looking for a real Dominican and they said, must talk to you, you're the real Dominican. So I, I come from a farm, I'm a farming person, so uh, I'm very close to the land too. And I was brought up on the farm with the sheep and the cattle and wheat. And what's your main crop? It's tobacco is your main crop? Si, sí, tobacco. 
es lo que, ponía la comparación, es lo mejor que hay. Porque antes de usted hacer los canteros, si usted va a vender un cerro taco, lo compran de una vez usted ve. Y la yuca tiene que esperar que esté de saque para usted poderla vender. La bichuela por igual, la uyama por igual, lo único es el tabaco, que eso es pan caliente. Este año se vendió a seis mil pesos cada cerón. So I see the rich people and the poor people, and not much in between in the Dominican Republic. You see it that way? No, porque usted, yo soy pobrecito y usted tiene. A mí yo no me, no se me llenan los ojos con los de usted. Porque hoy, hoy usted tiene y yo no tengo, pero mañana yo tengo y usted no tiene. Y a cada uno hay que dejarlo con lo de uno. Y si viene rico y me busca conversación, yo hablo con él, pero como es más rico que yo no quiero hablar conmigo, yo tampoco voy a hablar con él. Are you happy? Is your life good? Are you happy? Hasta ahora, gracias al Señor, yo me encuentro no una sola vez, mil, miles de veces feliz, porque gracias a Dios no tengo problemas con nadie. En lo que a mí no me importa, yo no me meto. Y no me meto con nadie, nadie se mete conmigo. Por eso soy feliz. Y Dios me tiene vivo, soy pobre, sí, pero Dios me tiene vivo, igual que a un rico. So, I'm trying to find freedom and understand what freedom means to other people. So, can you just give me your view of what freedom is to you? Yo hay veces, uno tiene, piensa muchas cosas. Pero hay veces cuando usted no puede hacer lo que usted quiera, tiene que estar tranquilo, porque cuando usted no, no puede hacer lo que usted quiera, y nada mala, nada obligado se puede hacer, es hacer cuando Dios le dé tiempo, usted hace lo que usted pueda. Y conformemente, si no se puede hacer nada, quedarse así hasta que Dios quiera. Bueno, para mí es libertad cuando usted no tenga problemas, no tenga enfermedad, y usted y su familia bien, es una libertad porque el que está preso no tiene libertad. Pero cuando usted está feliz que usted anda por donde quiera, usted está bien. Yeah, thank you very much for your time. Uh, you've been very wonderful and, and generous with your time. Muchas gracias. gracias. But um, I'm speaking to the, the camera now. Something in the West we have, we have lost. You have a very rich but simple life and you learn to be happy with what you have. And unfortunately, in the West, we have lost that. It's, uh, it's now that we're also educated and we're challenged and we're marketed to and we're forever chasing dreams and never quite happy, you know? But good, good on you. You know how to do it and we need to learn from you. Thank you very much again. As the sun sets on Buen Hombre, we contemplate tomorrow's journey fast becoming desensitized to the beautiful beaches and sun along the north coast of the Dominican Republic, we stopped near the Haitian border to explore the town of Monte Cristi and the border town of Dahabon. Both were home to many Haitians, who often crossed the border to trade their wares, usually donations from world aid organizations. This woman's organization provides underwear for women. She is responsible for collecting the clothes. At Dahabon, we attempted to cross the border to enter into Haiti, but stopped, as we were warned it was unsafe and the travel was extremely slow. Heading back to Monte Cristi, we visited our last beach, which featured 585 steps to walk down a relic of more prosperous times with the Granada Fruit Company. The Dominican Republic remains the most prominent provider of produce to the whole Caribbean. You could call it the fruit bowl of the Caribbean. Overdosed on the north coast sun and sand, we decided to head into the cooler, mountainous region of the central highlands to see why the country was known for fruit. The first farmer we met was happy to talk about one of their biggest exports, bananas. 
So, how are you doing? My name's Andrew. What's your name? Nicholas. Nicholas. Very nice to meet you, Nicholas. I saw this banana farm and I pulled in here and saw you were doing some packaging and things. Yeah. And uh, actually, we start the banana, bring it to this area, we prepare it for export, yeah. and some part of the banana stay in the farm. Okay. Okay. Since it's not the same quality. Right. First right. quality is going to export. Yeah. Uh, Mainly to Europe or something. Europe. Yeah. Is this the best part of uh, Dominican Republic to grow bananas? Or? Actually, the, the area is uh, the best part of the Dominican Republic to, be, to grow bananas. Because you're saying you know, you've got certain characteristics. Exactly. Uh, the part of the island, because if you go to the south, it's cold. Yeah. And then the banana needs uh, this chamber. Yeah. A little bit warm, rain, sun, and that's a perfect condition to grow banana. So the, this city is actually the best in the country. Also, uh, it's number one organic export. Oh, it's organic, yeah? Yeah, okay. organic. This is 100% organic. organic. Okay, a big point. Yeah, yeah. okay, sorry. The only way you can export to Europe yeah. is if you if you are certified organic. Is there only just one type of banana or is there many different varieties? Actually, the, 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 the final, the end food is the same. You can have different tree types. Yeah. But at the end, you're going to have the same type of banana. Yeah. It's actually one. Now, yeah. yeah, I know you said it was 56 hectares. Yeah. How many? Here's a, here's a question. How many bananas is that every year? <laughs> where, where we, you can have uh, 2,500 boxes of 42 pounds. <laughs> in, that, in that container, you can put uh, 20 yeah. pallets yeah. containing 54 yeah. boxes yeah. each. Okay. Every box is 42 pounds net. Yeah. So you need to do the calculation. Yeah, do the calculation. See, yeah. We don't, we don't, we don't sell banana by the. Let, let's just say it's a lot of bananas. Yeah, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of bananas. Thank you, sir. So nice to my, my meet pleasure. you and, uh, and see you. Well. Thank you. Okay. Alongside bananas, there are often avocados, oranges, mangoes, star fruits, and a whole lot more in the plantations. Andrew chose to try the chilies. Is this, is this something you do in really, uh, really? While those fruits can be quite sweet, chocolate is sweeter. We were fortunate enough to meet a farmer who had grown cacao beans for many years. Muchas gracias, senor. Awesome. He's showing us the cacao. Uh, we're here in, uh, we're near San Francisco, yeah? Sí, San Francisco. Yeah, the cocoa, sí. cocoa tree. Sí. Can you tell me about this tree sí. and uh, sí. the fruit? Sí. Yes, los. Lo pican, lo secan y lo meten en maquinaria. Esas compañías como los Rizé, los Muneses, Cortés Hermano, ¿ves? y lo procesan. Y ese dulce lo invean, vienen muchos turistas. Se, se produce un dulce de eso. Que eso, eso es prestigioso, a los norteamericanos les gusta mucho eso. ¿ves? It's the most that brings the money to the country. Yeah. Ah, it's like a seed. I thought it was going to be one big nut, but it's a seed. Yeah, okay. So that's what we have. Yeah. Se pone a secar. Okay. Entonces, después eso se seca, 
Y se lleva una compañía y lo venden. What, what happened about sí, eight? Sí, can sí, I eight? Sí, sí, sí. You can eight. suck it. You can... Sí. Huh? Sí. Sí. Se come así también, se come. Se come. Sí. Sí. Break it open sí. and then they dry, sí. dry this, uh, what's inside the seed, they dry sí. it. Sí. And then uh, that, that's like chocolate and then they what, crush it, crush it and grind it and make a powder, yeah? Okay. Watch this grass, my friend. Uh, this was very, very useful, yeah? We, we now know how chocolate is made. This is Tamboril, a tobacco plant-filled province home to many of the most notable Dominican cigar makers. Quite a feat to stand out in the country described as the world's cigar capital. The award-winning cigar company Don Anibal Trujillo was kind enough to show us the magic behind turning those green leaves into cigars. This is the, the where you, the plant comes in and they sort it. Yeah, they sort the plant. Before the sorting, this worker showed us the dried leaves, which were now the responsibility of the quality control person, who would separate the worst from the best of the bunch. Can you tell me which, what, how you classify? Tenemos, eh, yo casi terminé, pero aquí un ejemplo, tenemos lo que es el, el seco grande. Grande, Se dice yeah. quincena, seco quincena. It's the big dry. Okay. Okay. Aquí tenemos el 16, que es un poco más pequeño. Mm -hmm. Y se, se hay que diferenciarlo. Uh -huh. Esa parte, esa parte. Eh, tenemos el ligero, mediano, aquí. Ligero, mediano. Uh -huh. Es otra clase. Ligero, grande. Ligero, grande. Tenemos aquí el ligero quincena, que también va aparte. There's different colors, isn't there? And there's four. Yeah. El roto, que es otra clase. Y luego se sigue planchando ahí arriba. Y después se amarra. Una cantidad de 25 a 26 cubos. And the best of the best end up rolled, packaged, and stored in here. Rows upon rows of luxurious tobacco. Strangely, they had a few types named after Andrew. That's either a lucky coincidence or very good customer service. We're in the cigar storage room now. It's like really, really strong in here. The, the aroma, the smell is so strong, yeah? <laughs> I think I'd like a more mild cigar, not, not too strong. One of them was, this is your best one? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I want some Andrew ones. However, there's a lot of hard handiwork to do before the leaves transform into these deluxe Dominican cigars. Here at Don Anibal Trujillo, all the cigars are hand rolled by experts of the trade. You can see the sheer skill and care in every roll and cut. They use the different leaves for different parts, the filler leaves for the flavour, the binder to hold the filler leaves, usually mid-grade leaves, and then the wrapper to hold it all together. Combining the leaves was like second nature for these professionals. They even casually explained it to Andrew as they rolled cigar after cigar. We're not done there though. After the cigar is finished, it's wrapped in a protective cover. Given a stamp of Don Anibal Trujillo's approval, and then it's time for a cup of coffee. Only then could you call the cigar finished. So what's next after that, you ask? Well, a lesson on cigar smoke. Hello, my name is Andreas. Andrew, your name is? Okay, Jose. Jose, this is your business, yeah? This is your cigar. Sí, este es nuestro negocio, suyo también, bienvenido a él. Y qué gusto que usted vio cómo nosotros 
hacemos nuestro trabajo lo que nos gusta. Uh -huh. yeah. sí. Tanto el puro como lo que es el proceso de materia prima. Uh -huh. So you're going to show me how to light a cigar and smoke a cigar with star. Lo primero que hace es que toma la antorcha y le hace así. No lo lleva de una vez a la boca. Lo va girando aquí. Ya después que está bien encendido, le damos un poco sin la mecha. Este es un cigarro suave. Cigarro para dama. Pues. No es, no pica, no amarga, simplemente es un cigarro para tirar uno. Pues no tiene nada que ver con un cigarro que es exclusivo para una, para una fumada de un buen fumo, de un fumador que fume fuerte. Tenemos mucha competencia en la misma fábrica, los mismos fabricantes, la marca, quiero decir. Las marcas son todas competencias. Entonces, nosotros lo que tratamos de hacer es un buen puro que una marca no quiera superar la mía en calidad. Entonces, por eso nosotros estamos llevando el cigarro a un nivel mundial como número uno. Thankful for our wonderful tour of Don Anibal Trujillo's factory, and full of learning, smoke and coffee, it was time to hit the road again. Travelling all day through the Dominican food bowl, somehow we hadn't eaten since breakfast, which had been pork. That was on the side of the road, and so was the lunch we found on the way to the country's second largest city, Santiago. Yep, that meal was also pork. Dominicans certainly love to eat it, but that doesn't mean the pigs receive a life of luxury. Many of them are transported using quite archaic methods. You could say pork is a favourite in Dominican Republic, but it doesn't come close to the mega popularity of baseball, the most played sport in the country. We saw it again and again as we journeyed through smaller towns. The junior leagues practicing, boys dreaming of heading to the USA to play in the Major League Baseball, achieving glory, fame, and most importantly, riches. This youth team we met thought we were filming for one of the academies, which are a path out of poverty for the talented, lucky few. Es un privilegio y también es un dinero sano, donde las familias lo pueden compartir sin ningún tipo de problema, donde nadie le va a caer atrás preguntándole que dónde está todo ese dinero. Pero el béisbol para acá, para acá, no, no es tan agresivo como el Santo Domingo porque aquí no hay apoyo. Aquí no hay una autoridad que te regale un bate, ni una pelota, ni un caco. Ni le da una ayuda a estos niños, o sea, que nosotros lo que hacemos aquí es lo hacemos porque nos gusta y de corazón hacemos esto. Okay. So, is this very good team? Is good? Best class? La mayoría son buenos, hay muchos que son selecciones, gracias a Dios, muchos de ellos son selecciones y participamos casi en todas las actividades de la, de la selección, representamos siempre a Gabón, siempre en los torneos. Es difícil que nos quedemos en un último lugar, cuando no es primer lugar, segundo lugar. Y es importante, lo más importante es participar. We look like scouts. Is there a couple of good guys there that are going to go really big? And then do you think good guys here? So maybe I could, could take back to USA. Aquí vienen varios eh, scouts, inversionistas. Se llevan algunos niños, los que más talento tienen, para tenerlo en una academia, prepararlo hasta llevarlo a una edad de firma, porque ellos lo llevan de aquí de 12 años, 13, 14. ¿Entiendes? Pero hay muchos niños que han, han estado cerca allá, faltándole un año, un par de meses. Entonces, por la ayuda de su padre y su madre, no tener. No tener eh, suficiente económico para 
ayudar a su niño, no son niños de esos esquelas sin firmar. Porque hay niños que viven lejos de aquí, hay niños que viven a 30, a una hora de aquí. Entonces no se le hace fácil llegar porque no tienen una vida, una vida como le digo, no tienen una vida como viven algunas personas, ¿no? que pueden bajar en cualquier motor, en cualquier guagua. Hay muchos que son pobres y la mayoría que están aquí son muchachos pobres que están luchando por sus sueños, cosas así. Pero si ellos yo siempre les digo, si no logran, si no logran una firma, lo importante es que están en el deporte y estudiando. En el día de mañana para en el día de mañana van a ser una persona de bien para la sociedad. Muchas gracias, señor. Es un gran placer. Good job here. Good job. Ask the typical Dominican guy to choose between baseball, bachata, bikes or broads and the answer will universally be baseball. It's like a religion in Dominican Republic. And there are six major teams. Tigres del Lice, Estrellas Orientales, Leones del Escogido, Aguillas Sirbenes, Torres del Este and Gigantes del Cibao. Today, we are at the Aguilas or Eagles Stadium in Santiago. The Eagles are an immensely popular team and this stadium, nicknamed Valley of Death, is seen as the most intimidating in the country. The Eagles have put more players into the US's Major League Baseball than any other Dominican team. Santiago isn't just known for baseball, but for its history in relation to the discovery of the New World, or, as you might know it, North and South America. It was the first place named Santiago in the Americas, settled by Spain in 1506. Interestingly, Dominican Republic didn't become an independent country until 1844, when they gained sovereignty from Haiti. This monument was originally built to celebrate 100 years since that day. However, its name was later changed to the Monument to the Heroes of the Restoration, a dedication to those heroes who fought from 1863 to 1865 against Dominican and Spanish forces who tried to recolonize the country. To continue our journey into the history of the New World, we leave the country's second largest city to head to the largest, the capital, Santo Domingo. This city is the oldest city in the New World, founded in 1496. Driving into town, we notice it seems very poor, This was our chance to meet Dominicans at grassroots levels living a common Dominican life and learn what they think about life in their country. Politicians, they do good, good things for the country or no? 
I did mention that Dominican guys are passionate. Yep, they love their motorbikes. I love motorbikes. I love motorbikes. You guys love motorbikes, yeah? Having been enlightened and thoroughly entertained by the locals, we headed into the wealthy city centre, populated by sleek modern buildings and grand old remnants of ancient history. One of the most notable is Santo Domingo's Zona Colonial. Santo Domingo's Zona Colonial is a delightful mix of history and modern Dominican life. We took the chance to explore this World Heritage site. It's amazingly rich in history, featuring buildings such as the Cathedral Primada de America, the first cathedral built in the Americas in the early 1500s. two um, cemeteries for national heroes. Uh, the other one we'll go see shortly. So one would think Mr. Christopher Columbus uh, was very wealthy because he discovered a lot of parts of the world, established a lot of trade for his, for his nation, and this is perhaps not the case. Living in a very modest, modest home here. It's where the slaves, the slaves used to live. It's a ghetto. Uh, it used to be separated by a wall. The rich people who were over this side. It doesn't often get talked about here. Your tourist guides won't make much reference. It's sort of not such a nice thing to show. They certainly won't take you there, but. Uh, Santa Barbara. This is uh, this is where the slaves used to used to live. Used to be separated by that wall down thing. Let's go have a look. From the slave quarters, we dived deeper into Santa Domingo. With clear vision, we truly witnessed the active and vibrant city. We immersed ourselves in the music of the streets and the clicking of the checkers. Chasing both, we found a trio of musicians who we asked some questions. Hola, senores. Hola. Hola, hola. Muy bien. So, I want to know a little bit about your music in this beautiful country of yours. Dominican Republic. Uh, so you have Moinga, Machata, and you have a few other things too. So I'm just going to can tell us a little bit about Moinga, how it develops, what it is. Bueno, nosotros somos merengueros típicos de aquí de la zona colonial. 
le tocamos a los turistas que nos visitan y a todos que nos visitan. What was the what was what were the things that influenced the the Marina in terms of music? This artist grabbed hold of and he, he turned it into Marina. El acordeón viene de Alemania. La tambora, la percusión viene de del África y la guira que nosotros usamos que no es. My understanding is that so you have the merengue and then that came before bachata, which came later, but it's perhaps derived a little bit from the merengue. Bueno, la bachata de aquí de Santo Domingo, otro país. Eh, los fundadores fueron José Manuel Calderón, Luis Segura y Paniagua. Pero vino a agrandarse más la bachata con Antonio Santos, que es el mayor de la bachata aquí. Porque cuando comenzaron eso, que yo dije primero, se oía solamente en cabaret. Ahora se oye en todas las partes, después de subir Antonio Santos. Por eso le digamos el mayor de la bachata aquí, Antonio Santos. Thanking the trio, we headed out to dinner and another talk about music with university professor Nelfus Stapleton. Nelfus? Hi. Very nice to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you. La gente, independientemente de su condición económica, es feliz. Es feliz porque el merengue que suena, que está sonando ahí, lo, lo hace feliz, la bachata, eh, es una actitud ante la vida. Nosotros tenemos dos ritmos básicos. Uno es el merengue, suena un merengue. El merengue tiene más de 100 años y es la, y es la música más importante de nuestro país. Eh, el dominicano cuenta su historia de manera alegre a través de un buen merengue. Es una música que le da ganas de bailarla, que le da ganas de, 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 de disfrutarla por su propio tono. Y luego está la bachata, La bachata es, inicialmente era una música exclusiva para las personas de más, más pobres, aunque ya en la actualidad todas las clases sociales disfrutan la bachata y es eh, parte de nuestra identidad. La bachata, aunque ustedes no lo crean, habla del desamor, habla de la tristeza, pero de una manera tan alegre que usted cree que la persona está riendo cuando está llorando. Es una paradoja. Eh, y eso y eso es y eso es lo que nos hace sentir especiales sentir cuando un dominicano escucha un merengue se le el corazón se le se le agita y tiene ganas de bailarlo y tiene ganas de disfrutarlo y de festejarlo If there's one thing that can improve almost any situation, it's music. We mentioned it was popular and loud on Sundays. We meant every day and night. It's a fundamental part of the lives of many Dominican people. More importantly, so is the dancing. And unless you know merengue or bachata, don't pass go. And if you're young, choose bachata. It's what many young... You might say the music and dancing are the heart and soul of the easygoing, generous and friendly people of the Dominican Republic. Both are intoxicating, sexy, fun. Andrew did mention he wished he had attended those dance and guitar lessons when he was young to understand music and dancing better. Thankfully, it's never too late. What I really want to know about is merengue and cha. You, know? you want to so, dance? <laughs> <laughs> I probably need some more, more beer first or more, more rum. Can you tell me the difference? Your two big dance, like big things for Dominica, baseball, mm -hmm. huh? uh, merengue and bachata. Yeah. The ball. The beaches. The beaches, yeah. Uh, Reggaeton. Yeah. But the one I want to know about is merengue and yeah. The merengue is fast. Oh, merengue yeah. is fast, but yeah. the is slow. Okay, okay. We need music though, obviously. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Whilst Dominicans were generally not very shy, some dancers weren't too keen to be filmed. We think we understand. That partner might not actually be your wife or husband. As the beat pulsed deep into the night and we headed back to our accommodation, we made a decision to travel back to where we felt closest to our goal. Even after the whirlwind of experiences we'd had journeying through the country. We had travelled across the country, immersed in every day and every place, experiencing the Dominican Republic. We saw stunning beaches, felt great winds for kite surfing. We loved it. But nothing was better than the pure simplicity of life in Buen Hombre. And we will be back again. Just maybe our kiting and cooking skills will allow us to treat ourselves to a self-caught, sumptuous beach seafood extravaganza. Farewell and we wish you magnificent adventures as we go Chasing Zephyr.